one of the Biafra's heroes way fight during the Biafra Nigeria war. Hmm. It man don't come outside the co explain the things where you know what happened that time. And I would like all Biafras to watch this. This video is two. I'm going to bring the second one, but let us watch this one and we'll enter inside the second one. Please do check for the part two of this video because there's something he said in this particular part one, which is I like. In part two, there's something he said, which is I disagree with him. So we are going to take it one after the other. Watch this video and share it and check out. Uh, maybe in, in two or three hours time for the next uh the part two of this particular video however welcome back to balabas g's i want you to watch this video and hear within this man talk regarding the things that happened during the war watch the video the program is state affairs i am edmond obilo what are we looking at here it's a war story is the story of a child soldier during the Nigerian Civil War. My guest is George Uchenna Obogu. Mr. Obogu, it's good to have you on State Affairs. You are welcome, Edmund. You are welcome. Thank you were you. a child soldier during the Biafran War. That's right. How were you recruited? I presented myself because uh, that was the end thing I saw. Uh, I wanted to join the army. And the opportunity came for us as children. So we had the, uh, the boys' company. And so I joined. I was very You happy. wanted to join the I army. wanted to join. I Why? Was. Because of the situation that time, I, I wanted to defend that new republic called Biafra. You wanted Biafra? Yes. I wanted to be part of it. That's why I joined the army. You were passionate to defend in I was, I was passionate. I was passionate. I was a scout and uh, I, I wanted to. How did young persons like you see Ojuku at the time? Who? Ojuku was a commander. Very strong, very strong, very strong willed. And uh, he was able to motivate us into sacrificing all to defend our fatherland. Even as children? Yes. You all were ready to fight? They were, we were very ready, even with sticks. You know, there is this song. And we are carrying sticks. Can you sing that again? Why in India Because that was the enemy at that time. Was in the Did you as child soldiers you handled guns? Why fine fine. What kind of guns? AK forty seven. And I I handled SLR. That's Barretta for some time, for some time occasionally, but AK-47, unfortunately, I don't have any photographs to show. I don't have. Mm. Very, very unfortunate. Very and some, unfortunate. Of, some of you succeeded in going behind enemy lines as spies. Of course, that was our primary recruitment, to go behind the enemy lines, to spy out the positions, especially the heavy guns, where they have the armored cars, the artilleries, the rocket launchers, the mortar guns, and so on. That was our primary aim of being recruited, so that we will now come and make a report. And so our people will now know how to guard this lodge all those uh, arsenals. Were the child soldiers trained to be spies? Were they, were they instructions before you were deployed to the field? Yes, we were trained, though. We were trained. I was trained at Igwebike Grammar School. Igwebike Grammar School is where today? At Oka. Oka? At Oka. Igwebike Grammar School. That's where we were trained. And then given special trains in some areas also, how to handle cigarettes, how to handle newspapers, how to handle even guns. 
were properly trained. So how did you go behind the enemy lines? You know, in those days, that time, all the areas occupied by the federal troops, they still have civilians. They had civilians, especially uh, Oka, Elugu, Aziz. They had civ civilians there, and people move about, though they try to retreat them, but as we move about, they take us as children of them, of the community, and so uh, we are not, uh, they didn't suspect initially, but it was when we started giving good reports, and then they started being hammered. Ah, they started wondering, how do these people leak out information to the rebels? So they started being hard on any grown-up man in the community that they are spies, kind of. Not knowing that it was all these young... Uh, the children. The, the children that were doing that. Were some of you caught? Yes, unfortunately, some of us were killed. Were killed? Yes, some of us were killed. I remember a particular occasion. They were killed. Two of in our group were five. Two of them were killed. How did it happen? We, we went, it was in the night. We went behind the enemy line and uh, we were able to move about, saw what we wanted to see, but unfortunately, they saw us and they didn't shoot at um, immediately. They followed us. There was a barbed wire I passed through. Others were passing. That was when they started shooting and they got two of our young boys, small boys, and they, they were dead, but we got back to make the report. You still made the report? Of course, of course. And uh, it was very exciting as far as we were concerned. But they killed members yes. of your team. Yes, yes, but the aftermath of the our activity, you know, we were very happy because our uh, uh, Afghan forces were able to dislocate some of the big guns because the big guns were a big problem. Mm. Yeah, they were a big, big problem, especially what, the armored cars. What was the problem with Biafra? Not, mm. is it that Biafra didn't have enough armory? No, no, no. Biafra didn't have enough guns. Not to talk of heavy guns. Most of them were captured once. Anyway, Biafra didn't have heavy guns. So they relied on, you know, number six. We say number six to track mm. down here, we lay ambush. That's when we get hold of these people. Sometimes we don't even kill them. We just remove the uniforms, take away their guns and so and tell them to run. And you see them just racing back. Very, very interesting thing. Very, very interesting. But war is bad, right? War is bad, it's not good. It's not good, but there must be a cause for war. And like my people will say, uh, that is our log. You won't take because people die, then you will go to war. No. <laughs> if there is need for war, there has to be. Guys, as you all know that on 30th is going to be the Remembrance Day of the Heroes, the people who fought for Biafra. I also lost a family. In fact, a, a family that's supposed to be our second family was wiped out during this particular war. And somebody who I hear this name so much, but I never see him, is also in that particular war. So tomorrow, um, being on 30th, we are going to remember all those people. So make sure say you remember the people who fought. Because if they did not, maybe by now, your name will be Amiro or your name will be Danguru. So, however, I want you to leave your own opinion in the comment section regarding this video that you just watched. But do not forget to watch the part two of this video. There is a place that I'm going to say something which I'm, I'm, I totally disagree with this, our father, who is in that particular uh, place. But I disagree with him in, the, in, in that particular point. So, I'm going to do his next video, which is dropping soon. So, check and share. Thank you.